Get is a tool for files version control. It is a distributed, free and open source project. A recent survey showed that 97% of developers use Git as their main version control system. Git is also used as the base for platforms like GitHub, GitLab or Bitbucket. Git is called distributed because every collaborator owns a full copy of the repository with all its past versions. This makes it very robust as any user would be able to restore the code in case of a failure of the central server. Git is essential for two purposes, version control and collaboration. Version control allows you to keep track of all modifications to your files and restore past versions if needed. Collaboration is made possible thanks to a feature called branches. They allow every developer to work in a distinct environment before merging everybody's work into the final project. Let's dive into Git. The first concept you need to understand is the difference between a local and remote repository. In the world of Git, a repository or repo serves as a central hub where all the files and version history of a project are stored. The remote repository typically resides on a shared server platform like GitHub or GitLab. As a developer, you primarily interact with a copy of this repository called the local repository. This copy is stored on your computer. This is where you would do modifications to the code and test any modifications that you did. Once you are done with your modifications, you will be able to push all these modifications into the remote repository. This push, which is basically a synchronization between your computer and the remote repository, will allow other developers to access your updates, collaborate on the project and maintain a unified version of the code base. I will now demonstrate to you the essential commands to get started with Git. These commands are listed in the Git documentation that you can access through the manual by running man git. I recommend you to refer to one specific section in the manual called Git Everyday. To access it, just type Git Everyday. This section will list you all the commands that you would use on a daily basis as a software engineer. We will look into them in this video. To start a new repository, you can either start it locally or clone an existing repository. We will first do it locally. You would first need to create a repository, move into it and run the git init command. Now your repository is initialized. When you run ls, you can see that a hidden file has been created called .git. It contains all the information git needs to work. The second method to initialize a local git repository is to clone something that exists. To do this, you need to use the git clone command. The clone command just needs one argument, the URL of what you are trying to clone. Just run git clone and then paste your URL. Git will download everything in this repository and create a new directory for you. If you list all files, you can see that this 40 tutorials directory has been created here. Let's move into it. Here, you can see all the content of this remote repository. If you try to show hidden files, you can also see that this .git file containing any essential information has been created. Let's do some work in our repository. We will create a very basic Hello World program. I will use Vim for this. I can compile this program. Done. Now let's assume I want to push these modifications into a remote Git repository. There are several steps I need to do. At the moment, my changes are done locally. I want to add this new file to the index of Git. To do so, I use the git add command. The add command expects one argument, the name of the files you want to add. In our case, hello world.c. Git status will then show us that this file is tracked. Run it without any argument. At the moment, my modifications are in a staging area, but not logged in yet. They will need to be committed to be taken into account. A commit is a snapshot of what your project looked like at a certain point in time. All commits include a description message to allow you to keep track easily of what modifications have been done. Try to make these messages as relevant and short as possible. To commit, just use the commit command. The flag m allows you to enter the message. As you can see, one file has been inserted into my commit. Now, all the changes are logged in into my local git index. For other people on my project to access them, I simply need to update the remote repository. This is called in git a push. To do it, just run git push. And voila! you have pushed your first files with Git. Let's look into branches. They are a key element of Git. 
They allow collaborative work and prevent multiple developers to work on the same files. By default, Git initializes one branch called the main branch or the master branch in some older versions of Git. To create a new branch, we use the branch command. You need to enter one argument, the name of this new branch. You can see all the branches that have been created reusing the git branch command with the A flag. Here, you can see multiple things. My new branch that I just created locally and what's currently on the remote repository. My local branch has not been pushed yet to the remote repository. Now, let's make some changes into our new branch. First, we need to move to it. To do so, use the switch command. You just switch into the new branch. Let's make some modifications to our Hello World program. Just open it again. Let's change the message. Hello world, git is easy. Now, as before, we need to add all these changes to the commit. You can use a shortcut for the add command with a dot. If you run git add dot, you will add any modification that has been done to the commit. As before, you need to come up with a relevant message for this commit. Git commit, then your message, improved hello world. Now you have two branches. If we try to run the program in the two branches, we will see that they are different. In this branch, I have my improved Hello World. If you go back to your main branch, you will see that you will still run your older version of the Hello World program. This is because the two branches are separated from each other. Here, I can try to compile and run again my program. When I run it, you can see that we still have the old message. So, how do we merge these two branches? This is done with the merge command. The merge command expects one argument, the name of the branch that you want to take the modifications from. In our case, new branch. That's as easy as it is. You can see all the modifications that have been taken into account. You can try to compile your program again and you will see that the modifications done in the branch have been taken into account. That's it. When using Git in the real world, you will see that it's not often as easy and you will encounter some merging issues. I will now show you how to solve merging conflicts. I will now create an artificial conflict to show you how to solve it. I will directly modify the remote repository. Now, we will try to push our modifications here into the remote. However, we also have some unstaged modifications on the remote. Git will not allow this operation. To solve this conflict, I will now try to push my branch. Here, you can see that your push has been rejected. This is the biggest hint for Git. Always read carefully the messages because they will tell you exactly what went wrong. In our case, the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This is what creates the conflict and to resolve it, you will first need to pull from the remote. This is a very essential operation. To do so, just run git pull. Here, you can see that you had a merging conflict. This message says that you need to specify how to reconcile divergent branches. I will now demonstrate this. When running git pull, you can see that you had merging conflicts. Here, the message says that you have to fix conflicts and commit the results manually. To do so, use the status command. Git status tells you which files are in conflict. In our case, it's the hello world file. You will need to open this file and make some manual modifications for the commit to be successful. You can use any text editor. In our case, I will still use Vim. You can see that Git added some symbols in your file. These comparison operators tell you where the modifications are conflicting. You can see two things, the incoming modifications and the modifications that you have here locally. Git will display you and separate them with a line of equal signs. You just need to pick one of the two modifications and delete the other one. In my case, I will want to get rid of this conflict here. Just delete the lines and don't forget to delete the symbols that Git added. This looks good. Save your modifications. Now that you've modified your files, you need to commit them again. First, add the files to the commit, add a relevant commit message, and that's it. You can now push your modifications. Now that this is done, you can also have a look on what your remote repository looks like. If I go on GitHub, and refresh the page, you can see that all my conflicts have been solved. Now that everything is merged, you can delete your old branch. To do so, use the branch command again. Just do git branch, then flag D for delete, and the name of the branch. 
the branch is deleted. At any time, you can use the git log command to see all previous commits. Just run git log. You will see that you have a list of all commits that you added to your repository with the relevant messages that you added for each of them. This is one of the main reasons why it's important to make them as precise yet concise as possible. You can always check a former state of a commit with its hash and the checkout command. The hash is this long string of texts. You can copy it at any time and use git checkout to go back to the former state. You are now into your old branch. This is what this message tells you. Again, always patiently read what is shown after you run a command. Here, if we open our hello world text, you can see that we are now into a previous version of our file, the one where we had a conflict. That's it for Git basics. Git might seem intimidating at first, but if you carefully read the messages, you will see that this is no big deal and you will be able to navigate through it. Again, try to always refer to the manual by running man git and I strongly advise you to carefully read the git everyday page. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our playlist for more tutorials. To become a software engineer with us, join 42 Berlin by registering to one of our selection piscines at 42berlin.de. Happy coding and see you soon.